This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. Once again, prelates in Rome are admitting that what they are doing is breaking from the historic truths of the Catholic faith, and that the way they are doing is building something new in its place. You know, in some cases, they use the language of founding a new church, which is a weird admission. It's an admission that they are founding a new religion. What they're admitting is that the Synodal Church is not Catholic, and that the work that Francis is doing isn't Catholic at all. We've got more stories of this today, including the attempt by Rome to preemptively deny the reality of any future Marian apparitions. That might sound a little too much like, well, you know, any of the approved Marian apparitions you've probably heard of from the past four centuries of church history. Now, all the stories today would be unbelievable, but at this point it's obvious that Francis is moving ahead to secure the power of the modernists in the church for the conceivable future, and anything that undermines it will be cut off at the pass. Now, Rurate Celi published this piece by Dr. Peter Kwasniewski in which he outlined what we're seeing unfold in Rome. He begins with, where else really, but Archbishop Tuco Fernandez, the erstwhile poet of adult-themed poetry written for teenage catechists during pre the, ter, who has become the prefect for the dicastery of the doctrine of the faith. Fernandez, like other prelates working directly for Francis, admits openly that the work they're doing is not in continuity with the history of the faith, meaning in rather plain language, that the work of Francis is a novelty, theologically speaking. Now, as I've gone to great lengths to illustrate using the works of men like St. Vincent of Larens and others, those who teach novelty in the church are probably heretics, and they're generally to be avoided, at least their teachings are. Fernandez and others, as we'll see, admit that what they preach isn't traditionally Catholic. So from Dr. Kwasniewski's article at Rurate Celi, quote, Archbishop Fernandez, who until now was Archbishop of La Plata, continues to transmit what Francis told him, which is, quote, very clear. You have to take care of the teaching of the church, but not by controlling or persecuting, but by making it grow, deepening the reflections, trying to go to the depth of the subject. That makes us all grow. If there is a problem or someone is accused of having said something out of place, we talk about it and we talk about it. The new prefect also points out that the Pope's insistence that he accept the position, quote, shows his enormous delicacy and the respect he has for people's consciences. According to these references, they ponder the very great novelty, which would also be reflected in the next synod, in which a multitude of themes will emerge because it is planned with an openness never seen before. It is a unique space where the Pope sits, not to lower the line, but to listen to the diversity of opinions and try to reach some consensus. He continued, There is a mission, and it is that I have to make sure that the things that are said are coherent with what Francis has taught us. He gave us a look, a broader understanding, and we cannot respond today the same way we responded 40 years ago. I translate. There is absolute freedom for all the inventions and machinations. You just have to beware of the backwardists who stubbornly follow the ecclesial tradition. To those with good understanding, this explains the meaning of the current pontifical ideology, according to which the papal monarchy persecutes and liquidates those who do not keep up with the doctrinal relativism professed by the Latin American, meaning Argentinian, we should say, officialdom. The position that I have outlined, based on actual statements, which have been collected by the newspapers, is absolutely contrary to the historical depth of the ecclesial care of the faith since the time of the apostles. Even in times when the pontifical power was exercised by Cretans, by people who have a too strong a love for the ladies, <laughs> worldly men or victims of imperial meddling, it always took care that the truth that Christ has entrusted to the church not be sullied. <laughs> End lengthy quote. What are some of these errors, these novelties that they admit to, and that we are watching them publicly admit to? Well, let's turn our attention first to the German bishops who admit that we need to look at the faith differently to change how we live and believe as Catholics. This comes from LifeSite News, where they published this absolutely unbelievable piece exposing the head of the German Sonata Way as, once again, an admitted heretic. He's been exposed to this several times, but it's nice that he keeps doing this for us. Though, of course, he never uses that word to describe himself or what he believes, but 
This is eye-opening nonetheless because he frames what he says in founding a different church. Think about the implications of that language. Take all the time you need. Quote, The head of the Ber German Bishops' Conference, the DBK, has called for new ideas of how we can found the church differently. In a sermon on July 23rd during the 125th anniversary celebration of a parish church in Koblenz, Bishop Georg Botzing, who is known as the leader and head of the heretical synodal way, said he believes the church is a, in a new time of sowing. New ideas are needed about how we can found the church differently, how we can appeal to people in new ways for the fundamental acts of worship, preaching, and selfless service, Botzing stated. The heterodox German prelate said there is a, quote, need for courage to experiment and to resist those who say, quote, that this has never been done before. Who are we reading here, Botzing or Francis? It sounds like the same to me. Anyway, the old structure is no longer suitable for the future, Botzing argued. All this does not mean the end of the church. I am sure of that, but it does mean the end of a certain institutional form of church that was formative for, the, for just 100 years, but of which we have the impression that it has always been like this and should always remain like this. End quote. What's his reasoning for a new church? What I call the uh, Ted McCarrick problem in the church, of course. The German bishops have been using the crisis caused by men not fit to be priests, bringing great harm to vulnerable people, combined with the efforts of bishops with similar, shall we say, inclinations, who swept that whole problem under the rug as an excuse to essentially build the ape of the church of Catholic prophecy. As an aside, if you're relatively new here, if you're not familiar with what that is, numerous mystics and educated observers throughout church history, going back more than a thousand years, including Bishop Fulton Sheen most recently, noted that in the end times, the authentic Catholic faith would get driven underground, that the church would essentially be taken over by men who don't have the faith, who would strip what is called the Catholic Church of its divine content and build a false church that people accept as the Catholic Church, and that this false church would promote the evils of the enemies of the church, rather openly that the true faithful Catholics and handful of surviving prelates would be underground, operating in secret. The German bishops have been openly calling for changing the church's teachings on the James Martin sin, which sacred scripture reminds us is a sin that cries out to heaven for vengeance. The German bishops have also called for giving holy orders to women, the imposition of married priests on the Latin West, and for the church to be governed by laity in what can only be described as a diabolical inversion of how the church is to be governed. These men use the harm caused by men they openly advocate for now to try to force changes upon the church that stand in stark opposition to what our blessed Lord bequeathed to the apostles and their successors. These men think they know better than God, and they even blaspheme by claiming that the Holy Ghost is inspiring their wicked work. Case in point, Bishop Botzing, the head of the German bishops and their synodal way, says that scripture should not be interpreted authoritatively by the church, but by your own personal lived experience. And you know, to re somewhere Martin Luther is smiling in agreement with this German bishop. Why is it always German bishops? Back to our LifeSite article, quote, Botzing furthermore stated in his sermon that sacred scripture should be interpreted according to one's own daily life. Speak of your own experience with God, the German bishop said. Start praying personally and every day. Open the scriptures, preferably read them together, and interpret them from your daily life. Go out to the people and seek Christ there in their sorrows and joys. Do not stay among yourselves. Come together to thank God and to be strengthened by the Eucharist, he continued. Botzing said that his, quote, new beginning will not be without conflict, but, quote, it is worthwhile to dare the new beginning and to trust in God so that, quote, the seed of faith can grow. The head of the German Bishops' Conference seems to promote a subjective and modernist reading of Scripture when he calls on people to interpret the Bible from their, quote, daily life. The Protestant dogma of sola scriptura, Scripture alone, which, by the way, cannot be found in Scripture, has been condemned by the Catholic Church at the Council of Trent. Instead, the Catholic Church has taught that the magisterium is the ultimate interpreter of Scripture, and that this interpretation must be in harmony with sacred tradition. The dogmatic constitution of the Second Vatican Council, De Verbum, states that, quote, there exists a close connection in communication between sacred tradition and sacred Scripture. For both of them, flowing from the same divine wellspring in a certain way, 
merge into a unity and tend toward the same end. De Verbum furthermore states that, quote, interpreting scripture is subject finally to the judgment of the church, which carries out the divine commission and ministry of guarding and interpreting the word of God, end quote. What you're hearing, what Botzing was, off, was arguing there was for something that was formally condemned. We'll get to that later. The LifeSide article, though, does a good job of dismantling Bishop Botzing and the entire work of the modernist synod. I barely scratched the surface by quoting it. I want to move on to another modernist who is openly admitting that they are pushing heresy upon the church and that they're proud of it. There has been a common theme in approved apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary, ranging from Quito, Ecuador, and the apparition that some people for some reason call Our Lady of Good Success, though when its name is translated from Spanish, it's actually called Our Lady of the Good Event of the Purification. Much more ominous title, by the way. And these apparitions could carry on through La Salette, Fatima, and Akita, and the world, and they basically tell us that the world's going to fall into a period of heresy and corruption, and that the church would find itself in a deep crisis of immorality and corruption, that they would have priests and bishops more defended in becoming celebrities than in defending the truth and a hierarchy steeped in sins of the flesh, and all of it culminating in multiple chastisements, described by Sister Lucia of Fatima as being written explicitly in the Apocalypse of St. John, also known as the Book of Revelation, specifically chapters 8 to 13. These apparitions have been warning the church for the better part of 400 years now. Our Lady, speaking by the mandate of heaven, has been saying this for four centuries now. Suddenly, though, the Vatican is now saying those apparitions might not be real after all. Yeah, from LifeSite News, we get this headline. Vatican Mariologists suggest apparitions about God's punishments are, quote, false, despite past approval. The president of Rome's Pontifical Marian Academy appeared to implicitly reject the authenticity of apparitions, such as those of Our Lady of Fatima, in comments labeled as contrary to divine revelation. I included the reference to Revelation chapters 8 to 13 to show that this Mariologist doesn't really know what he's talking about. <laughs> There's been a consistent problem with modernists in Rome and beyond dismissing warnings of Our Lady from history and then openly lying about what the message she brought to the faithful are while then actively promoting very dubious modern Marian apparitions that happen in sites where actual real evil things happen. Rome is now preparing to basically deny the validity of any future Marian apparition that carries a warning from heaven. That's what they're doing here. From the article, quote, The president of the Pontifical Ca Marian Academy, PAMI, <laughs> has stated that a newly formed group inside the academy will judge any alleged Marian, quote, apparitions would speak of the punishments from God to be, quote, absolutely false, raising questions about what advice he will give to the world's bishops. On April 15th, 2023, a new body was established within the PAMI, which is set to provide key training and guidance to Catholic bishops on how to respond to alleged Marian apparitions. Reportedly, it is a direct response to requests from bishops themselves, for assistance dealing with alleged Marian phenomenon. Called the Observatory for Apparitions and Mystical Phenomena Related to Mary, it will attempt to provide clarity regarding the alleged Marian apparitions. It will analyze and interpret the various cases of apparitions, lacrimations, which are the weeping statues, but also interior locutions, stigmata, and other phenomena in the world that are in progress, progress or have already occurred but still awaiting a pronouncement on authenticity by ecclesiastical authority. Speaking to Vatican News in April, PAMI President Father Stefano Ketchin at OFM stated, It is important to provide clarity because often alleged messages generate confusion, spread ancients, anxious apocalyptic scenarios, or even accusations against the Pope and the Church. <laughs> How could Mary, Mother of the Church, undermine its integrity or sow fear and opposition? She was the Mother of Mercy and Queen of Peace, he questioned. Likewise, it is important to provide formative support because dealing with certain cases requires adequate preparation, end quote. I'm absolutely going to be revisiting the story in the near future because the implications are enormous and there's, he's in direct conflict with what previous councils have said. For now, though, it is sufficient to say that the God of surprises that Francis blathers on about and the endless mercy without justice talk who demands we accompany in dialogue with heretics and sinners while never calling them to repentance, their message is that this God that they worship does not punish mankind, and that no chastisement awaits us, and that they are so sure of this, they will prevent any 
ongoing or future apparitions from gaining approval based on this predetermined set of principles for judging this. Despite the to answer that bishop's question, it could or that priest's question, it could be that quite frankly, Our Lady is warning people about things that undermine people's faith in the institutional church because the institutional church has completely erased its own credibility on this issue. But you know, one thing here is for certain. The modernists have destroyed their own credibility, thus destroying Rome's trustworthiness to judge these events completely. We simply can't trust Rome to judge the veracity of a Marian apparition, which is not a good thing in the slightest. It's a tragedy. What do you think about this? Do you agree with me that they are once again just giving us a big, bright, flashing neon sign trying to get everyone's attention by telling us that they are, in fact, heretics? That they are telling us this? They are wanting us to know this? That we need to found a new church and not wish listen to warnings from heaven? Let me know what you think of this in the comments, please. And like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.